Hi, welcome back to Stories at Work, a series where I share real stories from across the world that you can use when you're trying to drive home a business point. Have you visited our new website? It's www.storyworks.in. Now, on our website and on our YouTube channel, we already have over 100 stories and we are adding one every week. The stories on the website are searchable for the business point you're looking to make. Now, if you like today's story, do show us some love and give us a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell icon. That way, you'll be alerted whenever there is a new story. Now, let's start today's story. The year was 2000, the place Nairobi, Kenya, the occasion, the ICC Champions Trophy. The ICC Champions Trophy is a one-day international cricket tournament organized by the International Cricket Council. Now, in that year, a young flamboyant 18-year-old called Yuvraj Singh had just joined the side. Now, like many other youngsters his age, Yuvraj Singh loved partying. He wanted to enjoy the good life. Saurav Ganguly was then the captain of the side and he knew this. So, as soon as they checked into their hotel at Nairobi, he called up the head of security and said, Can I meet you for a minute? Now, in a while, a 6 feet 5 inches African black cat holding an AK-47 arrived and asked, Yes, can I help you? Saurav said, Yes, you can. We are the Indian cricket team and I am the captain. We have come here to take part in the Champions Trophy. I need you to keep an eye on young Yuvraj Singh. Now, the head of security said very nonchalantly, I'm supposed to keep an eye on everybody. Uh, Saurav insisted. He said, I know you're supposed to keep an eye on everyone, but you need to keep an extra close eye on Yuvraj Singh. Now, this perplexed the security chief and he said, why? And Saurav explained, because he loves life. He will want to go out, he will want to go out of the hotel, he will want to party, he'll go to the bar, he will drink. And I am okay with all that, but I need him to be back by 9.30 safely in the hotel. And throughout the time, I need to know where he is. The security chief smiled and said, okay, okay, I'll do as you say. Saurav then said, however, this is just between you and me. No one else needs to know. The guy nodded and left. Now, sort of rationale as to why he said no one else needs to know was that managers are always very strict and he didn't want Yuvraj Singh's reputation to be tarnished in the manager's mind. He then called Yuvraj Singh and said, this is your first trip. We want you to play well and be disciplined. Yuvraj replied, fine, captain, I'll be disciplined. Now, as expected, the day before the first game, he disappeared from his room. Around 7.38, after a team meeting, Saurav walked past Yuvraj Singh's room and knocked. There was no response. So he went back. A little while later, he came back again, 15 minutes later, and knocked again. There was still no response. Saurav went back to his room and called Yuvraj Singh's room. Still no response. Saurav now rushed down to meet the security chief and told him, my youngest team member is not in his room. Can you tell me which are the biggest nightclubs in this city? The security chief said, nightclubs? Why? Saurav said, I know he would be in one of them. He would have gone to them and only I need to know. Can you please tell me? So the security chief named the nightclubs and Saurav asked if the security chief could accompany him to them. Now, the security chiefs told him that he will need to take a patrol and several cars, etc. And Saurav said, no, 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 just you and me. I can't have this information go out. Finally, the security chief agreed. After a few tries, they found Yuvraj Singh in one of the nightclubs having dinner. It was 9 p.m. Saurav slowly walked up, sat next to him and said, finish your dinner and we'll go back to the hotel. By 9.30, they were back at the hotel and Saurav escorted Yuvraj to his room. Now, Saurav was so scared that Yuvraj may step out again. He called the room again at 10.30, spoke to Yuvraj, wished him good night and heaved a sigh of relief. The next day, Yuvraj went on to score 84 runs, took a few wickets 
and got a few runouts. India won the match against Australia and Yuvraj Singh was declared the man of the match. Now Saurav in an interview later explained that he had Yuvraj Singh on one hand and on the other hand he had Rahul Dravid. Now this is how Saurav describes Rahul Dravid's attitude. He says Rahul is one of the most meticulous human beings you can ever meet. If you ask him at night, Rahul, the match starts tomorrow at 10 a.m. What time will you be there at the breakfast table? Rahul would say, well, I'll be there at 7.30. I will have a juice, some fruits and an omelette. And on my way to the bus, I will pick up an apple. And invariably, he would be there at 7.30 a.m. He would have a juice, some fruits and an omelette and pick up an apple on his way to the bus. Now, when you lead a team, there will be both kinds of team members. Both these players are very different, but both very, very valuable. Saurav goes on to say that no two human beings are the same. Like the fingers of our hands are different, like fingerprints are different, people are different. Now, the job of a leader is to do the right man management. Get the best out of different people with different upbringing, different gifts, different expectations. One has to get them together to ensure your company, your project, and your work progresses. I love that story. Did you? Now, where in business can you use that story? Well, it would be a very useful story to use when you're teaching your managers about leadership qualities, about having the ability to understand the different strengths and weaknesses of individual members in the team. This is really a story about different strokes for different folks. It is also a good example of how to deal with people who fall out of line. Making a public display of your displeasure or reprimanding someone in front of everyone else is not really a good solution. Now, where in business or where else in business do you think you can use this story? Now, do share that with me in the comment section. Now, as many of you know, the StoryWorks YouTube channel has two playlists. The Story Bank playlist, which already has over 50 stories containing stories like this, real incidences that you can share to drive home a business point. Now, the other playlist is called Leader Speak. In that channel, we have videos where leaders have shared stories that have created opinions they have. And you could pick up any one of these. Now, if you're sharing the, the, the same opinion with your team or driving home a similar message, you could use that story. Now, and as I said in the beginning of the episode, if you enjoyed the story, do give it a like and share and subscribe. Now, we also have a WhatsApp group for people who want a copy of this video for their use. To join that group, click on the link given below the video or in the comment section. I hope you join us next week. So see you then. Until then, happy listening to the other stories on the channel. Bye-bye.